<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Only the USA. We're here tonight with alternative rock group Pyramid. Okay, I'll go first and introduce myself. My name is Constance Batchmeister. Um, Mackenzie of Pyramid. Did you chop your finger off <laughs> recently? Um, almost. Um, you know, in your mom. Mackenzie of Pyramid. Did you burn your finger off <laughs> recently? Yes. <laughs> oh, we sure did. <laughs> Can you describe the pain? For it still burns. <laughs> Pyramid. After a show, do your ears ever hurt? Pyramid. And if so, could you describe the quality of the pain for our viewing audience's pleasure? Um, it's like this throbbing in, in the ear. Constance of Pyramid. Do you want to get real, real about mortality right now? No. I do. Let's talk about cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> How was it to play with boys, every member of Pyramid? Every member of Pyramid. How was it to play with boys? I gross? <laughs> I don't play with boys. No, okay. it, it wasn't. It wasn't gross. I, I mean, I know there is that rumor that there is a red tent somewhere. <laughs> no, it wasn't gross. It's gross. I can never tell if I smell. Mr. Crowley, hero or jerk? Was that question for me? It was for every member hero. of Pyramid. <laughs> Perhaps. Is, is it the book of the law? It is. Earlier I had a strange dream. I was a talking musical note. I have an accusation to make. Is this the mystical effects of the pyramid? <laughs> Did you transform the interviewer into a talking musical note? I don't really want to answer that right now. Recently. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Florence of Pyramid. Good the... evening to you, Florence of Pyramid. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Okay. <laughs> These mangoes are important. How? Oh. They're essential in proteins and multivitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, iodine, niacin, zinc. Um, mangoes are also rich in um, iron, uh, carbohydrates. Um, and I generally recommend them. I am Ryan Alexander, here with Brian Reynolds. Hello, Brian. Hi. <laughs> Brian, you smell great. Thank you. You wrote the theme song to Only Villa USA. That's right. Um, it's actually on uh, Spring Peppers. The original track is called Introducing Own Oil Ocean. This is your, uh, your album here? Yep, it's one of my albums. It uh, doesn't have the real cover art on it. It's sort of my bootleg version. 
a lot of different genres represented on there and um it's great so your your record label mithril strap that's what you're recording under it, correct it, 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 that's that's uh, <laughs> it's never been such a formal or even too focused of a thing. For me, it was a way to keep releasing material under one banner. I find it funny that it's called Mithril Strap because if you look up Mithril, you'll find that it's actually a a metal that holds a lot of magical powers in it. Uh, I got the term from Final Fantasy. It's, in the game, that's one of the most powerful um, armors that you can get is a mithril armor or the mithril weapon. Maybe it's got something to do with that, you know, the fact that one of the coveted items of the game is these mithril items, so something kind of rare. Now, in one of your songs, you talk about not practicing black magic. Have you practiced black magic? Not consciously, not, not on purpose. Um, and and uh, the the message is true. Don't don't do it. Stay away from magic. You know, some people call the Fourth of July magic. You know, you go to a fireworks show. This is magical. This is a magic. You know, first kiss, they might say, a magic moment. You know, but then other people, you know, they think Harry Potter. You know, having a wand. That's that's pretty. There's two different things. Magic with a K. Esoteric practices of the West. Sex magic. No, I don't. Not not my thing. Not my thing. Um, I'm, I'm wary of this stuff. You know, I do believe in a spirit world, and I do believe, you know, that there are spiritual uh, entities that, you know, they might not always have our best interest in mind, and we should have a uh, defense, so to speak. You what know, do you do to defend against them? I mean, if, if somebody's going to come in and hijack my body, what do I need to do to keep him out? Put on the, the armor of God. Where can I sign up for classes that are going to teach me how to shield up? Is it up to me and my imagination or? Go to church. Go to church? <laughs> Ready, aim, one, two, three, four. You can really be me. When you want to be me. You can really be me. Sometimes. When you want to be me. You can really be you can really be me sometimes and you drink all the milk when i wanted cereal you can really be me when you want to be me. you can really be me sometimes when you want to be me. you can really be me. you can really be me sometimes and you say i'm using you when I pick a puppet show over you You can really be Me When you wanna be Me You can really be Me Sometimes When you wanna be Me You can really be Me You can really be Me Sometimes And you drank all the milk When I wanted cereal uh, and that's how it feels to be mean.
It was dark in the forest. The brown bones of the whales hung down from the stiff New England trees like bloody fattened icicles. As we walked down the iron-like path, it splintered. One splinter reminded me of the goats of New England, and the other splinter reminded me of the ghosts and forests of northern Texas. Later, in the forests of northern Texas, we encountered the geographer. The geographer looked upon us inquisitively and then with sudden concern. I looked back at him and in his eyes I saw our mutual death. Moments later, we were dead. In death we were united, our arms laced together, and our legs laced together, and our teeth laced together, and our ears laced together, and our eyes laced together, and our shoes. We tied our shoes together like children. We were a three-legged ghost. You don't go in Onlyville until you go down the hill and under the bridge. Hi, this is Jeff in a special episode of Onlyville USA. We're here with Brian Chippendale of Black Puss and Lightning Bolts. I saw Brian give a speech at a wedding. I didn't recognize him with that. You know, he always plays in the monkey mask. Monkey mask? What do you call it? <laughs> I don't know. It's Damn. funny because I was just down in New Zealand and they were like, can you put on your balaclava for me? And I was like, I, didn't, I don't know what balaclava is. What are you talking about? Like, is that an instrument or something? With like, I don't know. But yeah, balaclava is just like a mask with, you know, basically a ski mask. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess. speech at, and then that's when we yeah. met at Kat's wedding. Yeah, and he said, I know you because you're the cookie guy. And I thought that was funny. Yeah, look, I, I do bake cookies. You make co you're the guy that makes cookies. <laughs> Those are pretty good. So can you tell us a little bit about your silk screening studio at your house? Um, which is in Olneyville. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's simple. I actually went to school for printmaking yeah. and dropped out of school for printmaking at some point. But um, yeah, I have silk screening facilities at my house, which involve like two clamps on a table. And then I have this old tanning bed, which I shoot the screens on, which some friend found on the in the trash at some point. Is this poster indicative of your work? I mean, I go through different phases, but it's kind of, it's kind of indicative of an aspect of my work, which is sort of like freeform drawing and splotchy yeah. colors. They're pretty random. I, um, it's tough making posters for shows, because you're like, you know, what's your, you're trying to draw on some kind of inspiration about like the show, kind yeah, of maybe, yeah. but it's, it's music and it's not necessarily like a visual thing. And I, I love all the lightning bolt covers and the mm -hmm. black pus covers. Is that this similar to the poster designs for the show or is more It's all it's just more like a, a, I mean I go through phases. I've been doing printing and drawing like for a long time. I've been printing for the last, I don't know how many years, like 20 years of silk screening or something. Yeah. Um, and then so the initial lightning bolt records were all silk screened. Maybe the first two LP, the first three LPs and the first couple seven inches. And then I started designing stuff that was like not still screenable, like I would do pieces of art or whatever, and then, you know, scan them, that, that style of making stuff. Um, hey, so I've been in Providence for 11 years, but everyone tells me about Fort Thunder in the day prior to my arrival. Yeah, you missed it by like two I years. I missed it by like two years. So what the hell was that like? It was just a big warehouse. We had a lot of shows, and we had a lot of people to live there. We had a lot of cats. And then we also managed to drag in like we would do a lot of kind of like Sunday night or whatever night garbage picking so we just dragged in a lot of stuff like bags of toys and then I kind of took it upon myself and some other people did too to like try to organize all that shit we brought in so I, I like started stapling stuff to the roofs and the walls and just kind of like working my way across the space and I mean so it was like six years of stapling toys to the walls we made like we had kind of mazes back there and I mean, it was probably a death trap, but no one ever died in there. It's like a shitty as hell warehouse with water pouring in through the roof, with a door lock broken with like, you know, stray cats. 
wandering around in the middle of the night, and whoever else wandering around in the middle of the night. It was great. Cool, man. It was like my 20s. Fourth Thunder was my 20s, so I look back fondly on it. Well, Brian, thanks so much for the interview. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here. Yeah. Olneyville, USA. This is Jeff signing off from the Columbus Theater. You have an EP about the Montauk Project. It's called... It's called Missing Time Drop Casino. And this is yeah. about time travel? Yes, yeah, so it's a uh, conspiracy theory. It ties in with the Philadelphia Project, if you've heard of that. Um, government uh, experiment into uh, cloaking from Soviet radar. When they turn on the cloaking device, it, it, it disappears. Um, the crew report that they were thrown through a wormhole into many different points in time. When they came back, there were sailors fused to the hull of the ship. Horrifying experience for many of them, a lot of them died. The Montauk Project is a continuation of those experiments, but then things went bad and they brought a monster through. Let me ask you a question, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? David Icke's idea of there being a reptilian master race. That, that's, that's, that's an interesting one. Everybody's got a little bit of a reptilian overlord hiding inside of them. Did reptilians build the pyramids? Who built that's the pyramids? A, that's a hell of a question. That, no, that, yeah, no, exactly. There is a narrative that um, slaves built the pyramids, but there's a video on YouTube man moves huge stones. This guy figured out this technique. He can take huge, massive blocks of stone. Um, he, he digs holes under the, under the stones and then uses beams to gradually prop the, the, the massive stones up and then balances a pebble at the uh, pivotal point and then is able to rotate these massive stones onto another pebble he just keeps rotating them, and he moves them incrementally. And he's been able to move huge structures, entire barns, just by pivoting them on points. What that proves to me is that you don't need, you know, thousands and thousands of people. It just takes human ingenuity, really. I mean... Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on and talking so much conspiracy and talking... Spirituality. Thank you, Ryan. Good night, Oldieville. Right, this is an original song by Josh Brown and myself called I Smoked Pot.
Have you heard the word? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Well, it's around.